Ropes and cables are a special type of structural element because they can only carry axial force and tension. So I have a nice orange piece of rope here. And you'll see that if I pull on it, it holds force and it's taut. And if I push on it, force. Uh, ropes and cables can only carry force in axial tension. Um, a good example of it too is if I take this marker and I tie my rope around it, um, we'll see that if I want the string to remain at 90 degrees to the marker and I let go, what happens is that the string twists until the center of mass of this marker is aligned axially with the string. So cables and ropes are special because they can only carry axial force and tension. If you try to put any force on it, apply a moment, it will just rotate and move until all force becomes axial. What this means is that when we see a cable or a rope, we know something about the inner, internal force of a structure inherently. Um, we know that in a rope or cable, we have axial tension for the rope or cable to be doing anything. If you put it in compression, it carries no force and it contributes zero. So let's work through a problem with cables. So I have two cables, cable A and cable B, and they're carrying a load of 10 pounds. Um, they're both at 45 degrees to the load, and this is the first appearance of actual structural supports. Here we have two supports. They are both pin supports. Now, a pin support can carry forces, but not moments. So it resists translation, but not rotation. So before we start any type of problem, we need to assign a general coordinate system. I'm going to say x axis to the right, y axis vertically. Both of these supports are pin supports, so they can resist forces in the y direction, and the x direction. I'm going to call this RAY, RAX, RBY, RBA. So R is for reaction, A because we're supporting cable A, Y and X giving us the direction. Now, if we look at this cable supported system and we say, can we analyze it? So we're in statics. When we analyze something, we're really asking, can we resolve all the forces? So let's look at this whole thing as one. Here we have one, two, three, four unknown forces. So externally, we have four unknown forces. This is a two-dimensional problem, so we ha have three equations of equilibrium. We can sum the forces in the x, and they will equal zero. We can sum the forces of y, and they have to equal zero. And we can sum the moments around a point. And all of those have to equal zero. Now here's the problem. If we have one, two, three, four unknowns, and three equations, there is no possible way for us to solve for all of the unknown forces. So if we look at this cable system externally, there's no way we can solve for all the reaction forces. Now, if we look at it and we say, well, this is a cable system. A cable system can only carry force in axial tension. So I know that inside each of these cables, there is one unknown force. Maybe I can do something with that if I can evaluate those forces. In order to evaluate any type of internal force, we need to do a section. So what we're going to do here is do a section cut through both of those cables. 
Now, when we do a section cut, it lets us break our structure up. We still have RAY, RAX, RBY, RBX, but our section cut reveals the internal force in the cable. And we know exactly what type of internal force we have because it's a cable, it has to be in tension. So I'm going to draw the force acting away from each of the cable pieces because we know it's putting it in tension. So when we do the section cut, it re 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 reveals the internal force Fa and the internal force Fb. Now, at each of these cut cuts, we show Fa acting in the equal and opposite direction because the cut is occurring through a point in space, right? And at this point, there has to be equilibrium. So the forces have to be equal and opposite and cancel out one another. So that's why we draw the forces going away from the cable and equal and opposite at a point because we know every point needs to be in equilibrium. Now that we've section cut this, we basically have four different pieces of structure. One, two, three. Now, for each of these pieces of structure, we can write three equations of equilibrium because each of these pieces has to be in equilibrium with the internal and external forces at all times. So we have piece one, two, and three. Now, if we look at piece one, instead of having four unknowns like we were looking at externally, we now have one, two, three unknowns. And the same is for part three. We have one, two, three unknowns. So wonderfully, we can now, we now have the number of forces equal to our equations of equilibrium. If we look down at part two, we actually have one, two unknowns. And in part two, that's where we have our force, which I'm going to write a resultant force in here, of 10 pounds acting. So part two is the part where we want to start. So if I go through, I need to write my three equations of equilibrium for part two. So those three equations are, as always, Sum of forces in the x has to equal zero, sum of forces in the y equals zero, and the sum of the moments equals zero. I'm going to start writing my x equation. So sum of forces in the x have to equal zero. Zero is going to equal Fa, and if I draw my coordinate system back on here, is going up and to the left. So if I look in the x direction, it's going in the negative x direction. So it's going to be equal to minus Fa cosine 45. The 10 pounds act strictly in the y direction, so it doesn't come into our x equation. Fb is acting up and to the right, so it's acting in the positive x direction. So I'm going to say plus Fb cosine of 45 as well. All right. So now we have one equation, but it has two unknowns, Fa and Fb, so we can't solve this equation, al equation alone. So let's move on to sum of forces in the y. Sum of forces in the y have to equal 0. 0 is going to equal Fa is acting up, so I'm going to say plus F sub A sine of 45. 10 is acting down, minus 10. 
FB is acting up and to the right, so I'm going to say plus FB sine of 45. Now we have two equations and two unknowns. If we work, we can solve them simultaneously. So if we solve f of x, they both have cosine in them, a cosine of 45 in them. So if we divide everything by cosine of 45, that will drop out, and we'll find that fa is equal to fb. So we can feel free to substitute anything we want into here. So we can say that FB equals FA. And if we go through and solve this equation here, we'll find that FA is equal to 7.07 .07 pounds. And since we know FA is equal to 7.07 .07 pounds, we find out that FB is always also equal to 7.07 .07 pounds. So now we know that F, both FA and FB are equal to 7.07 .07 pounds. Now, an important thing to note, FA and FB are both acting up. But FA is acting in the negative x direction, and FB is acting in the positive x direction, but they both have a magnitude of 7.07, .07, and that magnitude is correct. The important thing to know that when you're using your equilibrium equations and you're calculating things, positive and negative does not give you the exact direction. It's confirming whether you chose the right direction for the force. So. If we had put FA acting down and to the right, it would have made FA positive in our f of x equation and negative in our f of y equation. What that would have done is we would have found that FA equals negative FB, and we would have found that FA is minus 7.07, .07, telling us that we chose the wrong direction and we had to cancel it out and put FA going up into the left. Another important thing to know, we use both our sum of forces in the X and sum of forces in the Y, but we did not use our sum of our moments. And we did not use the sum of the moments equation because it was trivial, it doesn't help us. For example, if we look right at the center of where the two cables and the 10 pound force meet, all the forces act through that point so that there is no distance for us to use when summing the moment. If all the forces act through a single point, your moment equation becomes trivial. And this is just like you're looking at the forces acting on a particle. You only need forces in the X and Y. Your moment equation is kind of useless. To but now that we know that FA and FB are 7.07, .07, we can go up to the top and find our reaction forces. So we know that this is 7.07, .07, this is 7.07, .07, this is 7.07, .07, here is 7. If we go and say that the two dotted lines are opposite and interior angles, we know that these are 45 degrees, and this is 45 degrees. And we have RAY, RAX, RBY, rbx and we can write our equilibrium equations again and say that for a and i'm going to erase the bottom part
So for part A, I can say sum of forces in the x has to equal 0. 0 is going to equal Rax. plus 7.07 .07 cosine of 45. So 7.07 .07 cosine of 45 is 5. So I'll find out that Rax is equal to minus 5. Now, the minus means that Rax is not acting to the right, it is acting to the left. It has a magnitude 5. We can sum our forces in the y. They have to equal 0. 0 is going to equal Ray minus 7.07 .07 sine of 45, and we'll find that Ray equals 5, positive 5, Which means that we picked Ray going up at a value of 5, and since the answer came out positive, it is indeed going up with a value of 5. We come over here to the support B, the sum forces in the x, they have to equal 0. 0 will equal rbx minus 7.07 .07 cosine of 45. rbx will equal 5. So we chose the correct direction for rbx, 5. And if we sum forces in the y, that's equal 0. 0 will equal RBY minus 7.07 .07 sine of 45. And we find that RBY equals 5. So we chose it was going up, and it is, in fact, going up. The important, an important thing to notice is here in the y direction, we have 5, and we have 5. And in the original picture, we had 10 pounds going down. So if we look globally, we have 10 pounds acting down, we have 10 pounds acting up. The system is in equilibrium in the y direction. Here we have 5 going to the left, and we also have 5 going to the right. So if we sum the forces in the x direction, we're also in equilibrium. So for the cable structure, because it was supported by a cable, it was to our advantage to make a section cut and allowed us to solve for all the forces and reactions in the cable system. And we found out that the entire system was in equilibrium.